Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 187 of This Is The G Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. What's up? What's up? Each week we do news, politics, pop culture, that piping out tea from the one and only Tanya B on an extended birthday celebration. And in this week's episode, y'all, episode 187, Cheeto and the 78 felony count, 600 plus years faced in prison. It's getting ugly. Is brother going to work it out? in 2024 that's the question we'll talk about that with the newsmakers and plus uh my shy update season six episode one it's getting nice the season kickoff i'll talk about it uh political analyst harold michael harvey joins the newsmaker crew with talib and vi go to harold michael i'm in for trying to be again with t this week as she extends that birthday celebration cardi b is free free y'all give it up <laughs> Lizzo might not be. We'll talk about that. And Jonathan Majors is in limbo. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get ready. Thank you again for coming back. So, Syracuse Mike, what you got? News team, assemble! It's time for the Week in News with Syracuse Mike. The Frisco, Texas police chief has issued an apology after a black family from Little Rock, Arkansas, was mistakenly pulled over in a high-risk stop. They were headed to a basketball tournament. A Frisco officer ran the car's plates for Arizona by mistake instead of Arkansas, leading police to believe the vehicle was stolen. The family was held at gunpoint, and 16 minutes passed before officers realized they had mistakenly entered the wrong state into their system. The family says they have been mentally and emotionally traumatized by the encounter. And the actor better known as Pee Wee Herman has died. I wouldn't sell my bike for all the money in the world. Not for a hundred billion million trillion dollars. Paul Rubin's troubling behavior off camera led to a couple of arrests. He battled cancer for several years. Rubens was 70. For the third time, former President Donald Trump was indicted Tuesday by a federal grand jury investigating his efforts and others to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Special counsel Jack Smith. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. The four-count indictment includes conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to impede the January 6th congressional proceeding, an allegation that Trump attempted to and did corruptly obstruct and impede the certification of the electoral vote, and conspiracy against the right to vote and have that vote counted. With Tuesday's indictment out of Washington, we're now waiting to hear from Fulton DA Fonnie Willis, who has indicated the charges will come soon. The lieutenant governor of New Jersey died Tuesday. Sheila Oliver's cause of death was not disclosed, but she had long-term health problems and only appeared at a few public events in recent months. When she was sworn in in 2018, Oliver became the second lieutenant governor in state history. According to the governor's office, she was the second black woman in the country's history to lead a House of Legislature. Sheila Oliver was 71. Former President Donald Trump entered a not guilty plea to four federal charges in a courthouse Thursday. This is the third indictment for Trump and focuses on his efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. He left the courtroom in Washington, D.C. after a short proceeding and headed directly to the airport. Before boarding his personal plane, the former president made a brief statement saying it was a very sad day for America. This is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. This is the persecution of the person that's leading by very, very substantial numbers in the Republican primary and leading Biden by a lot. So if you can't beat him, you persecute him or you prosecute him. We can't let this happen in America. The next hearing for the latest indictment is scheduled for August 28th. Six former Mississippi law enforcement officers pleaded guilty to federal charges related to an attack on two black men earlier this year. The white officers called themselves the Goon Squad. After bursting into a home without a warrant, two black men, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, say the officers assaulted them with a sex toy and shocked them repeatedly with tasers for around 90 minutes. In many ways, the men were tortured and Jenkins was shot in the mouth. According to the federal indictment, Parker was staying at the home to help care for a longtime friend, a white woman. She lived in a predominantly white neighborhood, and Jenkins was staying there temporarily. Someone in the neighborhood complained to one of the officers. After torturing the men, the officers went through the process 
trying to cover up what they did. Two of the Tennessee three who were expelled by the state legislature won back their seats Thursday. Representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson were easily returned by voters in a special election. Both faced opponents in districts that heavily favored Democrats and really had no problem winning their seats. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks, uh, Syracuse Mike. Uh, Never a dull moment in America. Never a dull moment gets more exciting. I don't even know if I want to use the word excitement. That may be the wrong word, but uh, got to say what's up to the newsmaker crew in the building. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is episode 187. Tlaib Shabazz is in the building. Tlaib, Tlaib. The birthday boy, Vi the Country commentator, is in the building. Much older than I am. Don't worry. Vi the Country. <laughs> I know. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't you say it. <laughs> I'm going to hold Poli- my peace. <laughs> I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out. I'm a political <laughs> analyst, Harold Michael Harvey's in the building. Y'all give it up for the one and only Harold Michael Harvey. Always an honor and privilege to have him on the show. Go to haroldmichaelharvey.com. I'll make sure the website is in the notes for all his great work. And so much to cover. I'm just going to jump right into it. Trump's January 6th indictment and arraignment went down this week. And of course, that sucks the oxygen out of everything. Uh, it marks the first time the former uh, president has been formally held accountable for his efforts to overturn the election defeat in 2020. Uh, it's his third criminal indictment this year. Repeat that third criminal indictment. Who to thunk it? Uh, In a nutshell, it describes how Trump repeatedly told supporters and others that he had won the election despite knowing that that it was false. Uh, Before uh, I go to you, uh, Mr. Harvey, I'm going to I'm going to just frame a couple of things. Okay, Uh, five quick takeaways. And this is from AP. Uh, One being Trump knew it was a lie. Uh, Pence's memos are a big part of this case. And and Mike Pence is mentioned, what, like over 100 times within the indictment. Uh, The indictment says that Trump redoubled efforts even in late night hours, in the late night hours after the attack on the Capitol. He was still out there working, putting in work. And the uh, fake electors were duped into crazy play, what they call it, quote unquote, crazy play in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Nevada, New Mexico and Wisconsin. And they were out there submitting uh, alternate election certificates saying that Trump had actually won. And of course, the list of co-conspirators, you've got the lawyers, Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, Sidney Powell, uh, the Justice Department official, Jeffrey Clark, another lawyer, Kenneth Cheeseboro. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Harvey, he was the mastermind behind the plan at some point. And and there's a co-conspirator number six, uh, which I want to ask you about that as well. So here's but here's the scary part for me. And, and I want to I want to mention this because this is current. You know, we've been dealing with this things for for three years. Right. But the scary part is where we are now. Trump leads the Republican primary race in a runaway at 53 percent. The closest candidate uh, as of a few weeks within the last few weeks is Ron DeSantis. And he's only got 14 percent. So here's Trump out here with 53 percent. The closest candidate is 14 percent. Then there's everybody else Uh, in a head to head. As of right now, this is from the New York Times. There is a tie between Biden and Trump at 43 percent, according to the New York uh, Times. <sighs> With all this stuff that's been going on, Harold Michael Harvey, where are we? We're in an existential uh, moment. It is a question of um, what, whether the Constitution of the United States of America will long endure. We're in a constitutional crisis unparalleled in American history. The nation is on the brink of having to decide in 2024 whether it will continue to, um, whether the the Constitution of the United States of America has validity and vitality, or whether we're going to ditch the document and become something other than a democratic republic, and and that uh, our rule will be a rule of oligarchy. So that's where we are. We have to make a decision. Okay. And one of the other things I want to mention, and and Tlaib and Vi, I want y'all to jump in at any point, Um, you know, just a free conversation here. You know, there's an article that came out, uh, New York Post. Uh, I think, yeah, this, this, no, I'm sorry, this is the Washington Post. 
And the Washington Post says that the Democrats are worried uh, their most loyal voters won't turn out for Biden in 2024. And this is information that, that you know, we're not talking about like months ago. We're talking about now. Uh, according to the article, the concern stems from a 10 percent decline in black voter turnout in last year's midterm. That's compared to the last midterm, um, a bigger drop than any other racial or ethnic group. Um W. Mondale Robinson, founder of the Black Male Voter Project, shared uh, what, what I, I would call it a dire assessment. OK, uh, he said that Democrats potential turnout will be a problem, a big problem uh, with black men. Uh, he points out uh, that in the battleground states, many black men are sporadic or non-voters, meaning they are registered, but they have voted maybe one or none in the past three presidential elections. His quote, the Democratic Party has been failing epically at reaching the demographic black men. And that's sad to say, black men are your second most stable base overwhelmingly. And yet you can't reach them in a way that makes your work easier. Okay. Uh, Biden's political team has come out and says that they're taking action, especially with younger black men. When you hear that, Mr. Harvey, what are your thoughts? It's dire prospects for the uh, for for President Biden in 2024. I mean, if if um, the numbers uh, continue to erode in terms of black voting strength in 2024, it will be very difficult for President Biden to be uh, re be reelected. You know, we um, so the black female vote is always above 90 percentile. And that's a strong marker and they actually turn out and vote. But I think what we will find in 2024 is not so much that that um, black male voters are sitting on the fence and not voting, but I think many of the um, black voters, black male voters will vote for um, the Republican nominee. Wow. Especially if that's uh, Donald Trump. Going to Tlaib. Uh, to leave you, you and I, you know, we were having the conversation. Then I'll go to you, Vibe. We were having the conversation last week about Cube mm -hmm. and some of the other, uh, some of the other rappers. Um, and you know, you can go down the list of rappers who are potentially leaning in that direction and are outspoken in their criticism of Democrats and the Biden administration. Man, what are your thoughts when you hear those stats, man? What, well, what's not, what's not happening? Because you're out there, you, you know, you're doing, you know, you're, you're still a DJ. You're doing your stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Lot, you know, you're around a lot of guys in the studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What are they saying? Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, how can you be surprised that the Democratic Party is losing the black voters and especially the black male voters? When we look at, you know, uh, we look at a, a House and Con uh, a House and Senate that weren't able to pass any meaningful legislation to the melanated populations. You know, do you really expect that people are just going to keep going and, and you know, just, oh yeah, well, you know, we'll support them again. I know they didn't do anything for us, but you know, are they, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it's very, <laughs> I guess the way I really want to put it is, it's like, yo, it's real Caucasian. You know what I mean? Because it's like, how can you mm. consistently give me nothing and expect me to really back you, you know, for all this time? I mean, even the Nation of Islam says, has, a, has, a, has a, a question and answer that says, why do we love the devil? And the, the answer is because the devil gives us nothing. You know, mm. we're, we're, we're back to it again. And, you know, it's, there's, we, we act like there's no choice if we, you know, and that's the way this fear mongering kind of works as well. We say, OK, well, we don't really like Biden. Biden didn't do anything for us. Well, you know, then you got to vote Republican. Well, uh, well, if you vote Republican, you know what's going to happen. And, you know, that that whole fear mongering thing kind of starts. And mm -hmm. for me, it's just it's silly. We are at a point right now where we should be able to find somebody who's going to, you know, do what they say they're going to do. 
I'm gonna go to you, Vi. Uh, good point, Talib. Uh, let's. I'm gonna go to you, Vi. What, what are your thoughts? Why? Do, why do you think this is the case? Well, I especially, especially when we're dealing with all this after this kind of week. My but, main problem with this, uh, yeah, I agree. The Democrat has not done much for us, but what have the Republicans done? I mean, at least I can say the Democrat has not really done a thing for us, but they ain't really done anything to work against us. The Republicans are actually working against us. So my thing is. I, like I would say, it's the better of the two evils. Okay, the Democrat is not doing a whole lot for us. I get it. They could do so much more. But the Republicans ain't trying to do anything for us besides get your vote. And you, we, we've seen their true color. You got Ron DeSantis down there in Florida changing slavery, <laughs> saying slavery was good at one time. You got the Republicans <laughs> saying, you got the Republicans saying, there's no races in the world. So they putting right. their people, they putting their people on Supreme Court, and we can't see that. I mean, look at the big picture. Yeah, the Democrat is not doing a lot for us, but they ain't really working against us. The Republicans are working against us. So my thing is, you're going to say, well, the Democrat doing anything for Okay, ask the Republicans what they're doing. Ask them to explain them. Ask them to explain the stuff that they are doing that we know are working against us. Call them to the carpet. You want to call the Democrat to the carpet? Why aren't we calling the Republicans to the carpet? That's all yeah, and I, yeah, I want I want to jump in, and, and I'm going to get it back to you, Mr. Harvey, because you you and I have had some some hefty conversations on this as well. Uh, another article, uh, Route Routers, Routers. I don't know how to call it. I think it's Routers, but Routers. you know, I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been doing this too long. Black men lose faith in Biden. Uh, Democrats in 2024 is the title of the article. One of the quotes from a black male uh, voter who's disappointed in Democrats, uh, but also he's turned off by the Republican right. He says, it seems uh, like they do a lot to try to make it seem like they are the party for your young black men or, or black men as a whole, but they don't back it with anything. They don't follow through. Nothing. Uh, and, and many voters were disappointed. Biden failed on promises like voting rights, uh, police and criminal justice reform, uh, the recent student loan debt relief and economic empowerment. I'll go back to you, uh, Harold Michael Harvey uh, on on your thoughts, your comments. Well, you know, uh, both uh, Vi and and uh, Mr. Shabazz make uh, valid points. You know, uh, but but I have to come down on the side of uh, of Vi. I mean, it's it's um, w- one we don't believe does a lot, and so we're sort of like in that house. But we know that the housekeeper is not really, really looking after us. And the other side um, pay a lot of lip service um, and try to point out the things that uh, that the Democrats are not doing. But see, it comes down to me in 2024 is not about issues for Caucasian America. It's got to be about the preservation of democracy for 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 um, Africans of uh, for Americans of African descent, it has to come down to um, the, the preservation of the race and then the policies that we will get uh, if, there, if there is a Republican administration is going to be more in line with what we see DeSantis doing in Florida than the do nothing that we perceive is coming from the Biden administration currently. And secondly, uh, I also believe that in a second term, a re-elected Biden would be able to do more in terms of using uh, the, the power of his executive uh, decrees because it doesn't stand for re-election again. I think he'll be able to, he'll have more authority and power to do some of the things that Congress is preventing him from doing uh, if he had another four years, which will be the last four years of his administration. <laughs> Yeah, just a couple. Let me let me jump in real quick. Let me jump in real quick, and I'll go I'll go back to you, Talib, and I'll go back to you, Mr. Harvey. Um, but I, I just want to, because I'm the numbers guy. Okay, I look at the numbers. Uh, Black Americans make up what 14.2 percent of the U.S. population. That's 42.7 million of us. Um, we, you know, in terms of, and, and let me say this: that's a jump. That's an increase, uh, 30 percent in terms of population from 2000. Yet turnout has dropped by 10%, okay? That's for us, okay? The white turnout has only dropped 1.5%. 
Um, and, and let me mention this and then I'll go to you to leave. Donald Trump had a 12% share of the black vote in 2020. Um, and, and that was 4% higher than he got when he was going up against Hillary. Okay. A recent, the ISPOS poll recently, July 11th found, uh, and that was 11th through 17th, found that he had 18%. So it's gone from 12% to 18% if we were doing an, a hypothetical election right now. Okay. Um, that's compared to 46%. 46, uh, 46% of black men said that they would vote for Biden. So I'll go to you to leave after hearing that. And, and just real quick, it's one in four black men would vote for Trump. One in seven black women say they all vote for Trump. Now I'll go to you, Talib. Yeah, my, re- my question really was, you know, after Mr. Harvey said what he said, is do we take a chance again? You know what I mean? And that's and that's kind of the 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 prevalent attitude that I see is that why are we continuing to do this when we're not getting anything? You know, do we take a chance on Biden and his, you know, his lack of it seems almost like a lack of desire to push forth his agenda? Because it's like you said, he's not been using the power of his political office or the bully pulpit, as they like to call it, to 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 try and push his agenda through. You know, so can we and, and, and I'm not trying to say we go to the Republican Party either, because I think that a lot of the things that they speak about are just silly. But we do have some other candidates that are not being, um, you know, I mean, the Michelle lady, I can't remember who her last name is, but the other the lady, the female who's actually running for president on the Democratic ticket, you know, she says she can't get a, a media interview to save her life. She can't get a debate. They're not going to do any kind of debates in the in the Democratic Party this time, you know. And why is that? Can we? What can we do to not just fall in line with the status quo, but not try and buck the system in a way that it would hurt us? That's the real question, you know, that I see going forward, and not just this election, but elections, you know, in the future. Yeah. Going, going back to you, to, uh, you answer that, Mr. Harvey. Well, it, it all comes down to the fact that uh, orga- we, we are not organized. When when um, Tommy B points out the, the huge number of uh, white Americans who vote, that's because they are united behind an agenda, that is maintaining their power in America. And they see a diverse America growing and coming on strong, and they are unified in what they want. As a people, African Americans of African descent are not. I remember as a, who knows, I think I was a sophomore or junior at Tuskegee Institute in, in 1970, and Stokely Carmichael came to speak. Um, and what he impressed upon me was that what was needed now was not action, but he says you must organize, 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 organize. And we have simply, over the course of the last 50 years, not organized, organized, organized. So we bring, we come to this precipice of, of 2024 as an unorganized ragtag band of Africans living in America without an ag- unified agenda and then so we are left at the mercy of the system. And at the mercy of the system, it is uh, uh, accepting Vi's position uh, that you have to choose the lesser of the two evils. Now, right. all my life, those are the political choices I have had. Have I ever enjoyed the fact that I've been uh, snapped in this political system? No. But I've always had Negroes who, who would fall my efforts to organize my community to be a strong, viable political organization. Right. Mm. So here's where we are. And we have to we have to make the best decision possible for the survival of our community in this country. You know, so you know that's 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 my approach to that. I'm gonna go to you, Vi. Go ahead. Well I think what we need to do, I don't know if we got the guts to do it. 
the, like he said, the whites, the Caucasian, they're sticking together because they want their race to stay in power and they want to be the ruling factor. It seems like if the Mexicans, the Asians, and the black, if we get together, we can do something. Because it's not the white man who got the, the ruling chains against the uh for the black skin in college. It was the Asians. Because they thought they was they thought the blacks was taking their slots. So if the Asians and the blacks and the Mexicans get together, find a political candidate and support him, there's no way they'll win. And the whites know that. They're not gonna let us come together. They're gonna stick together, but they're gonna make sure we stay split. But so well, I'm gonna say this. Yeah, good good point, yeah. Vi. Good point. Right. And 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 this is one thing that that I push for, and I've, I've pushed for honestly since I've been doing the podcast. But it's a tough push. I mean, it's it's an it's a it's a uh, what do you call it? A hail mary push. Okay, because so, I mean the word is solidarity. Right. You know when you have solidarity partners, and and honestly, it's a tough putt because, and, and you know, I respect everybody's right to do what they want individually or as a group. There's some groups in this country who do it phenomenally well. You know who they are. I mean when when something happens, boom, they come together as a as a block. Um, you know, we've had challenges. We've had major challenges doing that. A lot of it has to do with one word. It's assimilation. You know, assimilation with in, on the Asian side, uh, assimilation with Hispanic, and and you know, of course, we've been here long enough to definitely assimilate. And you know, it, it it comes down to how people view whether or not there's a problem. Just like you look at Tim Scott. In Tim Scott's eyes, there is no problem. You know what I'm saying? And there's a there's a group mm -hmm. who feel exactly like Tim Scott, who look like us. Yes. Okay. And yep. and so when when you have I mean there there's a strong group just like you have blacks for Trump, right. you know so so it, it does come down to solidarity. I think that's the only way, honestly, that uh, blacks, black people, you know, uh, Americans of African descent, uh, it's the only way. The only way we're really going to be able to get anything done is to find some some solid some strong solidarity within this country. I mean, I know a lot of people want to say, well, you know, damn, fuck, F, fuck them. We can do it. No, we don't have the numbers. Right. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we don't, the numbers, the 14.2%, you know what I'm saying? You know, we could maybe uh, secede. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, secede to making, making Georgia in a little plot of land. I, you know, I, I, you know, but outside of that, um, and I'm joking, I, I, but, but it, it, it's true. I, yeah. I, I think ultimately it comes down to you know what, who are who are who are our solidarity partners. I will say this, and I'm I'm gonna just go around the horn uh, for a solution or or at least your final thoughts on this. But I'm I'm gonna say this. I think the candidates, the alternatives are horrible. Let me say that. I don't care if they get CNN interviews or MSNBC or Fox interviews. That's not going to make them any less horrible. <laughs> to leave. I don't care. I, they're just horrible. I mean, you know, Cornell West has proven himself to me. Going back to, I told you, I was talking about the time that, um, uh, what's your name, Sister Soldier obliterated him yeah. on national television. You know, the time when he showed his pettiness when uh, when he was with Tavis Smiley and, you know, yeah. The fact that Obama Obama didn't send him an invite, so he's going to be petty. It's just, you know, we need people who care for the movement and the struggle, not for the individual. Yeah. I mean, it, more than ever right now, we need people who aren't looking out for the bag. For the bag. Right. right. For the bag. But see, that's, that's the wrong. thing. You're not supposed to be looking for a bag doing as a civil servant. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I mean, hey, hey, hey! Somebody that a whole lot of folks didn't get the memo, right? <laughs> that, that, hey, hey, that memo didn't make it. Okay, I'm gonna go to you. I'm gonna go to you, Harold Michael Harvey. Then we'll go to Talib. Final, final thoughts on this: vote, vote the down ballot. Choices may not be where you want them want them to be, but um, you know <clears throat> we have. Uh, Black Americans have to participate in the electoral process next year in large numbers in order to uh, protect our own vital self-interest and uh, vote the down ballot because 
a lot happens on your city council level, on your county commission level, on your state representative and state senatorial levels. So vote the dime ballot and hopefully, uh, hopefully an appropriate party uh, that shares your values will, um, will, will put candidates in the race on these local levels to contest these seats. The, you know, we have gerrymandering, but somehow you just got to get people uh, in these communities and on the ballot. And um, and if the and if you see uh, friendly people on the ballot, on the down ballot, vote the down ballot. You know, it's not just the president we should be voting for, but vote the down ballot, please. OK, final thought to lead. Uh, you got to do more after the vote. I think that where we kind of fall short is we. You know, we've we've gotten to a point where people can get fired up about voting in general, but never really do anything after the votes have been tallied. You know, we've really got to figure out a better system of how to put pressure on these people that were elected so that we can have them looking out for our interests a little bit more. Because what we've seen up till now really is not working. Gotcha. Vi, final thoughts? Well, Final thoughts. So I think what we did with the bomber, we we need to stop playing with it said checkers and play chess. Okay, we got a man in president. Okay, but for some reason we thought that was enough. That's not enough. Once you get a man in president, now we gotta start voting on Congress, city council, the judge. We just can't just concentrate on the president. And that I blame that on us. Cause everybody keeps talking about a bomb. Okay, you put but did we do anything else? The man did say it. we got to continue to vote. And he meant yeah. we had to get we have to continue. We think this is the government we should, everybody should have paid attention in class. The president can't do it by himself. He's just in there. The Congress yeah. is, what, is what really ruled the government. He can make all the suggestions he wants, but if the Congress say no, no. So we have to concentrate on who we put in Congress. Because these folks we got in Georgia representing us. It's crazy. trash. <laughs> trash. But Straight that's trash. Well, not all. Not all. Not I mean, all. Let we, me say. Let me, not all, I don't want to throw all, the blanket. But I'm saying <laughs> it's a lot. I'm just saying it's on us. Yeah, we put yeah. we put Santa's in there. We put these yeah. governors in there. We have to do more. So just talking yeah. about the president, that's on us. So with that said, um, you know, again, thank you, Harold Michael Harvey. Uh, go ahead, Harold Michael Harvey. I, I, be, be, before I, I, I we go uh, segment away, uh, I wanted to um, to pay tribute to Charles Overstreet, uh, who who transitioned yesterday, uh, taught um, law at Harvard uh, Law School. He also represented um, Tupac Shakur and um, Anita Hill, the uh, survivors of the Tulsa race riot, and he he was a strong advocate for. Um, reparations for descendants of American slavery. Um, you know, he passed away. Very brilliant legal mind, and um, uh, just wanted to um, to pay a small tribute to him. We right, thank you so him. much. Good deal. Yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, let me just say we love your thoughts. Go to castropolis.net. Choose the people poll. Again, castropolis.net. Choose the people poll. Leave us a voicemail. Uh, thank you again to uh, to the uh, newsmaker crew to leave and buy. Uh, thank you so much. Again, Harold Michael Harvey, haroldmichaelharvey.com. I'll make sure I have the link on the uh, podcast page. Again, thank you so much. Uh, we will take a break and we'll come back. Uh, we're going to do the tea. Uh, Tanya B's extended her birthday celebration again. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do the tea. All right, y'all. We'll be right back. More. This is the G Podcast after the break. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's Tommy B from This is the G Podcast. We are now halfway through 2023. And if you've been thinking about starting your own podcast uh, in 2024, I'd love to have a chat with you. The Castropolis Podcast Network is currently accepting new shows. And if you have a clear vision and a unique voice, let's get in touch. Reach out to me at info at castropolis.net or visit the website castropolis.net. Simply click on the Contact Us button. So go to castropolis.net, click on Contact Contact us and just leave me a message. I'm Tommy B from This Is The G Podcast, and I can't wait to help you start your very own podcast journey today. Now then, children, it's time for tea. It's tea time, y'all. 
Sipping the Tea with Tanya B. Oh, yeah, y'all. It is time for tea. Tommy B in for Tanya B on that birthday celebration month. So let's just go ahead and get into it. TMZ reports that Cardi B has been cleared. Yes, go ahead and give it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In an investigation where she got a drink thrown at her while performing and she threw her mic back at the unruly fan. Though the fan was hoping for charges against Cardi, apparently she's in the clear. So give it up one more again, one more time for Cardi B, yes. I'm so new to this industry and for this to be my first experience is really crazy, to be honest. This was a corporate office and she was doing exactly the same thing that she was doing on tour, immediately that would be so many HR violations. So if there's anything that I can do in my power to ensure that dancers or singers or whoever decides to work with her don't have to go through that same experience, I'm gonna do that. Nobody speaks up because they're so scared for their jobs. I was terrified for my job. Lizzo is facing a lawsuit from a few former backup dancers in the claim the dancers state that they were physically threatened, sexually harassed, and weight shamed. Wow, all the stuff that Lizzo hates. Lizzo responded by saying, it's never her intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable. The Jonathan Major assault trial has been delayed until September 6th. Prosecutors say they aren't ready. Rumors are flying that the accuser has allegedly fled the country. She gone, y'all. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not taking either side. But she has fled the country. Could there be a possibility of a dismissal in this case? We'll see. But for now, a new date has been set for September 6th. <laughs> If you remember that smash song Pee Wee Dance from 1986 by Joski Love, you're old enough to remember the character Pee Wee Herman made famous by comedian Paul Rubens. Rubens was a cultural icon in the 80s and inspired the 1986, what was it now? Y'all know, Pee Wee's Dance which rapper Joski Love wrote. He says in five minutes at the age of 17, Love says he was asked to do lyrics uh, for the hot new dance by his label. He recorded the song while in high school over Christmas break. Five minutes? Wow. But rest in power, Paul Pee Wee Herman Rubens at 70. Also sad to hear that sports analyst talk show host Bamani Jones has reportedly lost his shows both on HBO and ESPN. That brother's talented, pick him up. I know he's got stuff in the works. Let's take a quick break and I'll give you my Shy Season 6 Episode 1 recap. this week Tommy B. Hey y'all yes 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 the shy season six episode one returns with a vengeance I just gotta say with a vengeance packing a lot in one hour not even an hour like 58 minutes to signal the return of what seems to be in my opinion a, an episode or a season in turmoil uh, it's going to be an eight and eight season so part one eight episodes part two eight episodes 16 episode season Despite what's going on in the strike, it looks like you're going to get a whole lot of shot. So good for the shot. So get ready. So here's my quick overview. Emmett's smoky relationship partnership with Duda. Can't believe I'm even saying that. Dude, how could you give Duda, of all people, your smoky franchise? I can't believe it. But anyway, let's look at this. Uh, seems to be yielding some big money, uh, big results. He's got new cars, one car for himself, one car uh, for his baby mama, Tiff, uh, new clothes, bank account. But it's really starting to take a toll on his relationship with Keisha. You can see it on her face. Um, you can see her female intuition just in overdrive about this whole thing. And, and you know, she knows it's a deal with the devil. Uh, especially when Keisha starts asking questions like, uh, what about that New York franchise? Why haven't, why haven't we seen a picture of it? You know, why haven't we gone to New York? <laughs> Can you say money laundering? <laughs> That's all I got to say. Uh, you know, Duda is, is, it's clear he's just not changed. You know, he's still playing 
you know, this is a powder keg waiting to be lit. Emmett, watch out, bro. You know, the other thing I think that people need to watch out for, I don't know, I don't, I'm not in the writer's room. I don't know what's going on, but especially watch out for baby mama tips man, Rob. Now, Rob, uh, his uncle was Q, who you know uh, met his demise at the hands of Duda last season. And I think it's just a matter of time before Rob figures it out. And you know, Duda ain't loyal, so y'all be careful. That's all I got to say about that. On a good note, Keisha takes uh, a new teaching career. You can see her face. She's happy. She's in a good place. And you know what happens when black characters get in a good place. <laughs> it becomes a bad place. So, you know, I want these two to work out. I want. I really do want uh, Keisha and Emmett to come together and do great things. Um, you know, considering what they both endured, considering what Keisha went through with the abduction, you know, considering, you know, well, you know, everything Emmett's done to himself. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Victor fulfills his election night dreams, but will this new seat and visibility in the hood put a strain on his romance with uh, his trans love for Tima, who's really beginning to share the dark reality of being trans, a trans woman? Um, Victor seems way too naive as she's given him this info of the potential trouble ahead. And my concern about this also is, you know, Fatima writes on the inside, she's an insider, like a political insider. So you're living on the inside, how soon before she starts telling secrets? So we will see, we will see. Um, Kevin has broken free from his two moms, but how long can gaming <laughs> pay for an apartment in Chicago, okay, in Chicago, okay, at 18 with a car, okay? It, uh, and also is a hookup inevitable between he and Maisha, the aspiring rapper and Papa's former love. Uh, remember, there was a, pl a flame between Kevin and Maisha pre-Papa. So it looks like that might be heating up again. Speaking of Papa, has Papa's pulpit, the host, found new love in a 19-year-old fellow Smokies, uh, Smokies work? We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Finally, I think the flow and direction of the shot seems to be up to par uh, from the opening love scenes among all the show's key couples to the stellar soundtrack. Uh, it is truly unmistakably the shot we love, we know and love. Uh, this first episode, I think, was really just fast moving to re-engage us into the new season. But I think as they get deeper into the character focused episodes, uh, we're going to start seeing some mess, you know, and um, you know, we've gotten away, uh, you know, I, I think they got away from some of the murder and mayhem, which was a good break for us. But I can already tell something ain't right. Like Keith Sweat said, something, something, something just ain't right. Uh, something is coming and we haven't even seen Crazy Glenn Whitfield. Uh, she hadn't even shown up. So trouble is brewing. Uh, I think everyone's going to be tested this season. This is just based on the first episode. You can see friendships, relationships, family ties. Loyalty, love, community. Oh, Lord, there's a whole lot going on in the shot. 16 episodes, and I think everybody's going to be on the edge of their seats. Episode one, season six, is preparing us for hell of a ride. I can't cover it all, though, y'all. Uh, go ahead and give me your feedback. Go to castropolis.net. You can go ahead and hit me with voicemail, too. And if you leave me a hot voicemail for the shot, I will play it for you during this segment. That's the Shy Talk, episode one, season six. And I'm Tommy B. Hey, y'all, as always, big thanks to Syracuse Mike, uh, Tanya B, Vi, Talib. Thank you, Harold Michael Harvey, for coming on this week and clarifying things for us. Uh, thanks to the crew, Millennial Nick, Lady J, Regia, Music by K-Dub, all those who help us make it happen week to week. Thank you to our international audience. Remember, uh, every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern, you can stream us first. Links are in social media. All right, castropolis.net, share us with friends. Don't cost you nothing, y'all. It does not cost you a dime. And I'll close with this. Uh, my PSA for this episode is, you know, and I'll borrow this from the great Willie Hutch from the 70s, the movie The Mac. Brothers gonna work it out. Remember that, y'all? I know y'all don't. <laughs> but the, the line, brothers gonna work it out. Brothers gonna work it out. That's all I gotta say. Let's figure out ways to motivate our brothers to vote. Motivate, but don't shame them into voting. I think that's the key. Let's motivate. Let's let's meet them where they are. And with that, episode 187 is in the can. Have a great week. Peace. Power to the people.